All aboard and welcome to another Animation Station, friends. I am, of course, Sparks Witty, the usual host here on Animation Station, and I am joined this time by Ben Magnet. Hello. Yes, and we're here to talk about the first season quotation marks for Sonic Prime, really the first ep- eight episodes. I I know they're calling it a season. I wouldn't call this a season. Uh, I kind of would, but I do agree. I mean, eight episodes was kind of short, but still, any chance to talk about this adorable, cute little blue hedgehog makes me a happy person. We'll we'll get into it, but I wouldn't call it a season because it doesn't feel like it actually does a season's work of narrative. Um, sure. <laughs> also, we know Netflix rules where they just cut this up. This was this isn't like, you know, the next chunk of episodes they're calling season two was already done. Yeah. Bastards. Um, <laughs> Okay, so Ben, let's get your first thoughts on Sonic Prime, because I kind of know where I'm at, but I don't entirely know where you're at. I highly enjoyed Sonic Prime. Um, I I mean, Sparks, as you know, but maybe the audience doesn't know, I've been a Sonic the Hedgehog fan for almost my entire life. It was the first, Sonic was the first character and the first uh, pieces of media that I truly latched onto. Like, I was trying to wake up early in the morning to watch the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Every time I go to Blockbuster or a video uh, video store, I'd be looking to see if they had any of the Sonic Set AM tapes anywhere. And also, I have a decent-sized collection of the Sonic the Hedgehog comic books. So Sonic is, of course, a decent amount of video games as well. So I was... I was excited, but also a bit of me was just a little bit concerned because the last Sonic media we got was Sonic Boom. And I'm not saying Sonic Boom is a bad television show. It's actually very funny. You've probably seen clips of it online. But I was still curious of what they were going to do with Sonic Prime because we, in the trailers, we see Sonic has new shoes. We see him. He's in an alternate dimension. And I was just curious of what they were going to do with it. And quite frankly, I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Um, For me, my history goes back almost as long as yours with... uh sonic stuff my actual first exposure i don't think we've ever talked about this was an educational game when i was like four. Oh, like please tell really me it's what edu- huh is, is is it what i think it is is it sonic schoolhouse i don't i don't think i don't know because like sonic wasn't really in it it's following tales oh okay that's i did not play that one I, oh man sorry <laughs> sonic schoolhouse was like one edutainment game that i actually saved up money for yeah. And I bought it just because it had Sonic on it. And then when I finally down uh, like installed it and started playing it on my computer, it's a horrible game. <laughs> yeah, I don't it I don't sucks. I honest, I honestly don't remember it very much, but I like I latched on to Tails before I actually officially met Sonic. Um, really? Yeah. Um that little fun bit of history. But so like Sonic's been in my life for a really, really, really long time. Um and I think <sighs> I'm so mixed on this show mostly because I think the animation's incredible mm-hmm. and I wish the show's story were a little bit better. And that's really where I'm falling because like, you know, we, we talked about this off air, but like uh, originally Ryan and Brandon were considering doing this with us because they wanted to get like into something Sonic related. And mm-hmm. I watched enough of it to say, this ain't the one guys. Like, unfortunately this is not the one that I would say, yeah, this is how you get in new Sonic fans. I'm like, not not quite no no i completely agree like when i started watching it i as i was watching this i was like okay as a as an almost lifelong sonic fan this is great this to to me this is really good but if i were to show this to someone who isn't really who doesn't really know sonic i would definitely be like nah you you could skip this one this is fine i would say just stick to the movies at this point (laughs) and that's and that's kind of the sad thing is that like you know we're sitting here and we're like it's good if you already like Sonic, I guess. Yeah. And definitely. even then, like, and even then, I, I got to admit, Ben, that like, I'm a little more, I'm a little more pulled back, I think, than you, where I'm like, this is questionable and like good sometimes. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I agree. Cause you could definitely tell that, I mean, obviously, this is a children's show and there are some, the writing is definitely tailored for kids. I will completely, I will get that. But there are some good Easter eggs. There are some good, uh, I would say some good jokes here and there. But, I mean, I still enjoyed it, but it's definitely, I mean, to, let's be real. Sonic Sat AM, the original, um, one of the oldest Sonic shows to exist. That is a stupid high bar to pass. Yeah. And I wouldn't say nothing has surpassed it because obviously we have a generation that grew up with Sonic X as their main Sonic the Hedgehog TV show. And that show is pretty damn good. So 
I mean, I would say it's not up there. And if I had to tier this, I'd probably tier it as maybe a B minus or maybe a C plus. I mean, it really depends on the day and what we're talking about. I still I, like it. I, I still think the animation's great, though. I get you. The funny thing is, like, our co-host Brandon like messaged me recently, and he's like, "What's the best Sonic animated show?" And I'm like, "Well, it's it's what you just mentioned because like nothing nothing's done better since then, and like we've had a lot of Sonic shows since then, and it's been thirty years, and yeah." We're, we still can't do a good Sonic show. <laughs> like, like a legitimately, like no, no discussion or like having to kind of like set expectations about just like, it's a good Sonic show. And we're still not there. Um, all I admit as a person who watched all of Sonic X, I'm like, I accept Sonic X, but like, I don't love Sonic X. Um, I, mean, I think it's I will, fine. I will admit it has been years since I've last seen Sonic X. And I only remember t-voting sonic x because i mean obviously sonic adventure 2 was one of the biggest games around or at least it was one of the games keeping the dreamcast somewhat afloat and that show was going through sonic adventure and then we got introduced to shadow sonic adventure 2 so of course i was like eating it all up because like oh my god it's the games but on television this is awesome and also i was a small impressionable child so i didn't know any better right and i haven't I haven't been back to it since. I just remember really the only thing I really remember from that show is gotta go fast. The theme song. That's it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, like it goes, it goes some interesting places, especially it's final arc where they're like traveling through space. Um, It's, it's not a bad show, but it's not the quality level I wanted. Um, It's a kind of like, you know, well, it's the best we got since, since the first animated series. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you have Sonic Boom, which I respect and I think has a lot of good humor in it. But my thing about Sonic Boom is that Sonic Boom is not the classic Sonic characters. It's very much, you know, it's it's the video game universe that they built to go with the show. And, and that's fine. It's a different interpretation and I have no problem with it. But it also means like a lot of things I want to see in an animated show, they're not going to do because they're not going to bring in Shadow. They're not going to bring in um, a bunch of elements from the, the later games and things like that. They're focused on their own Sonic Boom story. Yeah. The thing about Sonic Boom is also because I have started what I start. I tried to start watching. Or no, and I not tried. I did start watching Sonic Boom, but I fell off of it. And there's a billion and a half Sonic Boom clips that have been circling the internet. I'm pretty sure you've seen the one where Amy's trying to kick the goal and turns out Knuckles is a hardcore feminist. Or when Sonic gets the speeding ticket and says, I fight in court, but I don't think they'll accept gotta go fast as a condition. Um, but the reason why I want to talk about Sonic Boom for a very hot second is because that show, I feel, is very tainted because of how poorly um song boom the, the rise of Lyr- of lyric was received mm-hmm. um that was of course the game where it was completely unpolished it was did not feel like a sonic game a lot of fans were already anti sonic boom because of the re- of the drastic redesigns and now and the game also turned out to be god awful i mean there's that famous glitch where you can use knuckles to infinitely jump and skip an entire level before it was patched um so I think Sonic Boom had an uphill battle, but I do agree that Sonic Boom does have its good moments. It does have its humorous moments, and it and I when I see those clips, I do want to. Part of me wants to check it out, but if I had to be honest, I would much rather watch Sonic Prime again before I go and finish Sonic Boom. Well, and that's easier to do. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's significantly more episodes of Sonic Boom. I think the thing with Sonic Boom is that, as you pointed out, like there's great humorous clips there's a lot of things out there that i think are really good but they're usually clips and sonic boom i'm aware enough of it to and have seen enough to know that like the thing that's lacking that i want is a long narrative like an actual full Mm -hmm. narrative structure it's all just like it's fun for its bits but it's not building a story um not like what sonic prime is doing yeah yeah and also and also it's not like what sonic said am or even sonic underground did because sonic underground also had a longer form story whereas you know completely different universe sonic is a prince he has his brother and sister and they're trying to find their mom or even with uh sonic prime because sonic prime does have a decent story so yeah sonic boom is i see that as more of a what's what's it called more of an episodic tale instead of a long form storytelling because it's like hey we have a problem that we need to solve within 15 minutes and they normally do right so getting to sonic prime yeah. um I, it's it, no doubt like the animation is the the standout. It's mm-hmm. it's really really good. It looks great, mm-hmm. especially in action. Um, 
there's there's a lot of gorgeous animation on display here and a lot of good animation quirks. And I want to shout that out because that's like the most positive thing I can say about the show is I think the animation is really good, really oh, yeah. good all throughout with a small exception on I get what they were doing. But when we get to the the jungle world and we start darkening the area, I'm like, mm. we're, we're really narrowing down the beauty of this animation by taking out a lot of the light. Yeah. The, once we got to the junk, once we got to that, to that area, I was also in the same boat. It's like, okay. So I, I, once they finally do break through the trees and you could see the color of it, because that's one of the best things about Sonic the Hedgehog or both in the games and in the, and the shows is how colorful, I mean, my sad AM, cause you know, that's about robotic one and that one. Um, but Sonic games, especially Sonic games are very colorful um that's one of the points of of how of i had a point here but i was going back to the genesis games uh but yeah sonic prime it is a very colorful show like you have the the paradox prism it's a prism it's multicolor. it's multicolorful, and when it gets shattered every single it's every single thing is every single dimension has its own different color and i think that's really cool and then once we go into the jungle like when they're above the trees it's just brown blue it's not as vibrant. And then of course you go under into the shade. It's just dark. And I'm like, mm, okay. Yeah. Um, so I think let's get into, hmm, how do I want to say this? Um, this show is, I think one of the reasons that I thought this isn't the show for newcomers to Sonic or, or really, really rough newcomers to Sonic is because you get zero introduction time right like they, it does not ease you in to the gang oh no um, not even close uh like you should know who knuckles roge shadow amy uh tails tails is easy i'll give them tails like i don't think you need to intro tails i think everybody on in a passive way knows tails um yeah uh and big the cat which i think is the biggest one where it's like who <laughs> for most fans I would push most, back. Most people, and, sorry. Yeah, I would say that you need to introduce Rouge and Shadow because I would like uh, definitely Rouge, Shadow, and Big. Whereas Sonic, Knuckles, ta- uh, Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy, they have been part of the Sonic franchise for eons. I think even a lot of Casey Casuals who might not know Sonic, they see Amy, they go, "Oh yeah, she's that the girl hedgehog from the Sonic franchise." But then you see Rouge and especially and maybe Shadow a little bit less, but Rouge is. Actually, one of the things I actually do like about the show is Rouge's inclusion, because a lot of times Rouge is off doing her own thing in the game. She's with Shadow and E one in E um, and Gamma, but in this show she's like part of the gang. She's helping them out. I actually like her inclusion, but once again, I know who she is. I know what her character is based off of. So, go, uh, getting a Casey Casual into it, it's like what's Rouge's deal? And then you find out that she's a jewel thief. You go, what? What do you mean she's a jewel thief? So I'll I'll push back a little bit on I think everybody except maybe Knuckles in what you said of like how much they need to give you information wise purely because this show is based around sending Sonic to other places and encountering different versions of them and if you don't know the original versions of them then you are not getting the gags or you're right. not getting all of the riffs on how this is different for their characters and and what the impact of that is and I think that's a problem for people who like Let's just go with people who saw just Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic the Hedgehog 2, just those movies, and they're coming to this show, which is admittedly got to be a part of the audience that they're trying to grab. The people who mm-hmm. went and saw these movies, they want them to come watch this cartoon. You need to introduce Amy. You yeah. need to make them know who Amy is before mm-hmm. you say, and this is a different version of Amy. Like, that doesn't mean anything to anyone who's not familiar. Um, right. And I think that's a problem because the show is structured around encountering these alternate versions of the characters. And not having a ground foundational idea, even even for us, like I'll admit, like I get enough of the archetype of Rouge that they're playing with when they go to these other universes. But like, just as you pointed out, Rouge is not normally hanging out with them. Mm. So I kind of wanted to be more familiar with the original version of her here before yeah. we start mixing it up. Um, so I feel like that's a little bit against the show's uh, appeal because you so quickly go into these alternate versions and without the idea of who these characters are, you're not 
you're not getting the full idea of what doing the riff on them is. I think the only one, again, you can give a pass to is Tails, um, mm -hmm. who I think is done very well. And it's very clearly like this different interpretation of Tails when uh, we get to nine um, in the in the alternate, in the new New York City dystopian mm -hmm. world. Um, and so Tails, I'll, I think you can get away with, but everybody else, it's like, it does. It, it really stood out to me when we get to the pirate episode, and then they do what I think is really cool. The in the video game style flashback to Sonic and Knuckles interacting in their history, um, but that's how long it took for us to get any kind of like. If you don't know Knuckles, hey, you should know this about Knuckles. Yeah, and that was like episode seven, and that was the penultimate episode of the air quotes season. Right. Um, I mean, I do also like when we get to – you mentioned the flashback when they turned the animation to 16-bit Genesis-style graphics. Um, I love that they did that, especially when we go back – when Sonic first goes into New York City and we meet Nine and Nine tells a story about how Sonic wasn't there to, you know, give him the nickname of Tails and to, you know, build him up and be like, hey, you can be better. He's like, hey, you are better than those bullies, yada, yada, yada. Um, but at the same time, I completely agree because – we only get that though that really cool flashback animation scene only twice, and I could definitely use more of those animation scenes, especially when we're talking with Amy or we're doing with Rouge, or even with Shadow, because Shadow we just I want to say it was episode four or maybe five where we see the flashback of Sonic fighting Shadow back in Green Hill Zone before he goes to help the friends to with the Paradox Prism. Yeah, it's a little and, while later. Yeah, and it's only and it's just like a, a hot little like, oh yeah, the shadow, he's angsty. And there was a funny joke about his roller skates. Um, but other than that, it's like if you should know who Shadow was, or at least the, his um connection to Sonic, because you know, Sonic Adventure 2 is a highly is one of the the biggest games and biggest franchise, or one of the, the biggest games in Sonic Lore that Sonic fans want to go back to, they want to cling to. That's why so many people were freaking to bleep out at the end of the movie the second movie. Yeah, I'll say that Shadow's probably one of my favorite parts of the show. Um, I agree with you that I think, like, again, for newcomers, there needed to be more information about Shadow uh, mm -hmm. when we're getting that flashback. But I like the way that Shadow's pieced out into the show, um, yeah. that we're slowly putting together where Shadow was before things happened, and that Shadow is the person who's trying to get Sonic back on on mission and, like, back on track. He's trying to fix it. Uh, mm -hmm. and I think that's, that's really working for me as a plot device. Like the thing that makes me want to come back for season two is mostly shadow. Um, so I really like the, the use of him and like, I, I, I like the character already, but like, yeah, I think the way that he's included into the plot is really smart. Um, mm -hmm. I just don't, I, like you said, I don't think that newcomers are given enough information about him. Um, right. like, <laughs> Do you know what chaos control is? No, tough. <laughs> Too, too bad. Yeah, and like he says, chaos controls, and I can only see people who don't know or who never played Sonic Adventure Two or any of the Sonic games after that. They're like, "What's chaos control? What does he does he control the chaos emeralds?" I'm like, and even then, they don't have chaos emeralds in this show. The only major gem is the paradox prism. That's it. Is that true? I thought Shadow was holding a Chaos Emerald. Oh, you're right. No, he was holding a Chaos Emerald. You're you're 100 right. I was I gonna that. say I'm pretty sure he's holding one when he does Chaos Control. Because yeah, I was gonna was say like I, you can you can context clue a little bit that like it allows Shadow to do something with the Chaos Emerald, but still like, and it, it's I like having like these these acknowledgments and references to stuff from the games. Like I I'm glad they're there. Um, it's just again like I don't think it's very friendly to a new audience. Yeah, I kind of, um, I, I did chuckle a little bit, like when we go into Nine's base of operations, his passcode's 1992, which was the release of Sonic the Hedgehog 2, his first ever appearance. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there's like you know, a little if stuff. If you're a big dork, you get it. Like yeah, us. exactly. <laughs> Yay, dorks. Um, yeah. But I but I do get it that that Shadow should have been introduced a little bit more. And yes, he is. You're right. He is holding the Chaos Emerald and he does Chaos Control. But if you're Casey Casual, you're not going to know what that gem is. You're not going to know what Chaos Control is. You're just going to be like, what's that big, big ass jewel he's holding? Right. Um, OK, I I kind of want to get to this one because it's one of my other big problems with the show is that I don't understand the Egg Council or whatever you know call what? it. I was so, so annoyed by that baby. So when when the show was being promoted, 
I assumed, and I think you probably did too, that because we're doing like many universe things, somehow different versions of Eggman from different universes were coming together to form this yeah. council. And mm-hmm. that's what I thought up until like episode three was going on. And then it becomes clear that they don't know how to travel between the worlds. And so I'm like, so that's not it. So what is this? Why is this happening? Yeah, I was also kind of bummed out because I was hoping that all of these Eggman or these Eggmen would like convert. It's kind of like a, like an anti council of Reed Richards in a way, because where you have like these like some of the smartest beings in in the Sonic franchise getting together and like, hmm, we've met in different universes. We can do some really cool stuff, or add some really damaging stuff, like they did to New York City. But the fact that they were all in New York City, and then they're like, "Hey, let's go out other into other universes." I that wasn't my favorite, and actually, the council itself. Um, I mean, obviously, there are some funny characters. There are some funny bits, like the old man who can't catch up. But I was just stupidly annoyed by that. But damn that's all baby. of his joke. That's all of his joke. He's yeah, old. exactly yeah, and. Yeah, I definitely think the Egg Council could have been redone a lot of ways. Because I agree with you. The Egg Council, at first, when you find out that they're just from this one universe, they're kind of weak. Well, because, like, the other thing about it is that... So, I guess, just in this universe, there's just... There are... Are they all family? They're not all the same person at different points in his life. They're all just a family, I guess. This is my problem. I don't have that answer and neither do you. And that's my problem is that like, yeah. I don't, I don't understand the egg council. And I'm like, if there are our primary villain force, which it becomes clear towards episode like six that they are, um, then like, I need to have a better idea of who they are. I think the only one who really works for me is the baby. Um, and the baby works for me because of how they incorporated being a baby into his mech suit. Yeah, um, that, that is pretty. Like, yeah. yeah, having like the the Simon Says button thing on his mm-hmm. like, I'm like, that's pretty good. That's and pretty I'll, darn good. I will give I will give you that his mech suit is is very imaginative. And also, like he pushes a button and his rattle is just a giant mace. Just I also like that he's just violent. Like his his go to reaction is just hit, hit the things. Um, so the so he works for me. And then mm-hmm. the like the laissez faire teen who's only playing the game the whole time like i don't care get out of here what are you adding yeah. um and then you get the next level up which is like the kind of pompous i guess 20 ish year old version who's uh uh like a lot of the he does a lot of the charging action on our heroes and i'm like okay i guess and then you got kind of classic Eggman, but not quite uh and then the old guy and I'm like, we could have done this with the baby, the 20 year old version and the kind of classic Eggman. And I would have at least enjoyed it a little more. Yeah. Yeah, I compl- I completely agree with you on that. I actually forgot about the kid playing the video game because I my memory would go back to he the does, baby. He does nothing else. He just sits yeah. there being absorbed in the video game. Mm hmm. And he just like just mumbles stuff and yeah. Yeah, I, I completely agree. What I was kind of hoping for, like so obviously, like with the trailers, we knew we were going to different universes. And there have been like going way back to the Archie comic books, Sonic the Hedgehog has dealt with multiverse stuff before. Sure. Um, albeit not very good, but it's dealt with multiverse stuff. Part of me was kind of hoping that if since we are going into like a, a multiverse or a parallel dimensions, we would see a good Eggman, a Mr. Tinker or a Dr. Kintobar of some sort we would I'm not see gonna rule that out that that can happen still yeah or we could like essentially just like dive into different like multiverses and i mean maybe this is like a part of me just like really wishful thinking but maybe sonic can lands into the sad am universe maybe not seeing all the characters from the sad am universe because reasons but at least seeing that it's not gonna happen. yeah it's not gonna happen but that would be cool here's though. the thing here's the reason why ben um they already blew their wad on a version of a world where Eggman won quote unquote with new york city they're not yeah, gonna they do did. it again yeah, um they did. It, it it is what it is uh and and like they're not gonna do that you're talking about something that would be really cool now what would what i what i believe could happen in the show and if the mm-hmm. show's smart will do it is that sonic ends up in a world where he doesn't encounter any of the usual gang instead he encounters an Eggman, but the Eggman is good and oh. uh, actually has to work with him in order to get on to the next world kind of thing that would be pretty good i don't have a lot of faith that they'll do that but it's possible and i like to believe um this is kind of the thing is that 
it's such a well it's such a well animated show i can't stress mm-hmm. that enough i think the action beats every single action beat is incredible um yeah. i love watching it like a big part of the reason i enjoy watching the show is because of how good the animation is and it's so unfortunate to have that and then i feel like they're just not really going for the ideas that they created um like they're just they they're not adding a lot to these characters yeah it was pause for a second my alarm's going off gotcha okay so what i was saying is just that in general when they have the opportunity to go to these worlds and be saying something about these characters by seeing these different versions of them half the time i don't feel like we're really going for it right and again i think part of it is not building even for people who are familiar with the characters not building in the world a foundation of like this is how they get along here um that's that's a big part of where the show falls short for me. Yeah. Yeah, I would say the show falls short a little bit for me because we get to, we spend a lot of time in New York City. I want to say we spend like three or four episodes there, and then it, it turns into like a one episode we're in the jungle, another like a episode and a half we're doing with the pirate stuff. Or two. So I'll tell you. I'll tell you what it is: is that we go to New York for two, we go to the jungle for two, oh, we go okay. back to New York for one. We go back to pirates for one for two. Okay. Um, part of me was kind of hoping for, I mean, this once again, wishful thinking, we might get more of this in the second season is more universes and like different versions. And, but one thing I will say, I do like how Sonic shoes change in every universe he's in. Yeah. It's a fun mechanic. Yeah. Cause at first, like, um, at first when we saw his stuff for his shoes redesigned for New York city, I will admit I wasn't the big fan of it, but of course I'm a classic Sonic fan. If it doesn't have, it's not red with a white stripe over it with a gold belt with a gold buckle. I'm kind of, I'm like, mm, I don't know, but the fact that his shoes change and they also give him different abilities like his claws and his, his climbing gear for the jungle was really cool. His, um, his hovercraft shoes for in the pirate world, I thought were very innovative. Um, I mean, besides that, I enjoy how they're how they're able to change and shift throughout the his his travels. Mm-hmm. But also, it's still just like the lack of worlds that we saw. I was like, I wanted to see more. Well, here's the thing. I what I'll say to that, Ben, is in eight episodes, I don't think there's a lot more they could have done. Right. Like I, you know, without it feeling like kind of meaningless, like you wouldn't spend enough time there. Um, and again, like that goes back to us saying like, you know, this isn't really season one, right? This right. is, this is midway in production of a season and they said it's season one, but it isn't. Yeah. Um, and you feel that. I think you feel that me personally, mm-hmm. I like the, the end of episode eight does not feel like a finale. It feels just the same as the end of any <laughs> other episode before it. Yeah. Like the second shadow said, there is no hole. I'm like, where is it? Oh, that's right. This is the last episode. Damn it. Not only that, I I will say like I wouldn't even call that a cliffhanger ending necessarily. I would call that like that's the setup for the opening of the next episode in a way where like it makes sense because that's kind of the mystery you've been following the whole season is what is Shadow doing and then you get to it and then they're like end of season and I'm like, "Well, not really though because you just stopped it here arbitrarily. It doesn't feel yeah. like a season finale. It feels like a end of an episode just like it, the previous ones." Yeah, it does. Uh there was something else I wanted to talk about, but I completely blanked on it. Dang it. I'm sure it'll come back around. Um, but to your point about like the worlds, I remember when we were watching the trailer and like the first time we really just saw a lot of New York City. Mm-hmm. And I remember saying then, I'm like, oh, if we're going to do all this world jumping stuff, I really hope we get some other worlds in it. And now that we're on the other end of it, I'm like, oh man, I kind of wish we just stayed in New York City. And <laughs> it's partially because I'll admit, like I, I kind of don't care for the jungle world. To me- Oh no, me, 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 I hate that one. <laughs> To me, I feel like it slows down the show. Um, it takes Sonic literally too long to get up to speed. He seems to not be able to understand what's happening, even though this is the second time he's jumped to a world and things have been different. I'm like, dude, like you gotta just, you gotta pick this shit up a lot quicker. Um, so for yeah. me, um, it it felt like. I would have just nixed the jungle world. I don't think it adds anything to Sonic's arc in the series. And it doesn't really inform, I think on the other characters enough for it to matter, even as their alternate versions. So I'd rather just move back on from it. Um, The pirate one, I do think actually added some stuff. 
uh, for Sonic and uh, as a alternate look at, at the gang, especially Knuckles. Um, and so I actually like the pirate one. Uh, I didn't think I would. I'll admit that going into the show, the pirate one is the one I thought was going to be stupid. Um, and I actually was impressed that I kind of enjoyed it um, because it's all about, you know, like like at the core of it is Knuckles running away. Right. Yeah. And uh, and Sonic changing his mind about that and about like having to go and face what what you're dealing with, uh, you know, something Sonic is notorious for like moving on from. So so there's like there's an arc and lesson in that. And you can argue that's there in the jungle one. Like I know that it's based around the 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 like the spot with the tree and it's like oh, appreciate what you got, Sonic. And I'm like, yeah, I guess. OK, whatever. <laughs> They frankly, they didn't do enough flashing back to the original crew because, like, that would be the thing is like more of the jungle episodes should have been more of Sonic's memories of the people that he's missing right now. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm also kind of waiting for an explanation of like, are the others lost in other worlds or are they ju- do they just not exist right now because of how this has worked? Because they make it seem like because of what Sonic and Shadow did, they're the only two who are able to travel. And then everybody else is, I guess, maybe still home or they're separated into these other versions. Same with Eggman. Like, are the originals out there or are they just like unseen? It feels that because Sonic and Shadow were caught in the chaos or like some chaos control time loop or whatever, I don't know, that when the prism shattered, those Sonic and Shadow were the only ones who were unaffected by the prism splitting everyone into like multiple. De- I mean, that was my interpretation of it is because Sonic and Shadow were like Sonic went into the prism directly and Shadow used chaos control in the split second. So both him and Sonic were unaffected by the prism, whereas everyone else, Eggman included, they have like new versions on themselves. They were split between because I don't honestly, I don't think the originals exist. I think once the um, sorry, there's a bug. I think once like if the prism comes together, then it, they'll everything will be restored, and they maybe the friends just won't remember anything about it. But that was my interpretation of it. And now that nine can travel between universes, one thing I did I remember the point I wanted to talk about earlier. I have a feeling that nine could become an antagonistic force later down the line, where maybe he becomes the new antagonist for like say the final two or three episodes because he doesn't want to go back home to him all he knows is like pain and sadness and he's in this new world and once and if sonic were to come up and say hey i have a way to fix everything and nine goes no i like where i am now i want this to stay the way it is i am finally by myself i finally have complete control and autonomy over what i can do and if you're going to change all that and bring, take everything back to the way it was before to where I was alone and had no one there to help me, I don't want that. Right. I think that you're probably right um, that there's a possibility for that because I think they're, I, I like nine. I think nine's arc is really good. I actually like him as a very different interpretation of tales. Um, nine is one of the alternates that really, really works for me. Oh yeah. So I think that's entirely possible, but I want to go back to what you're saying about like the prism splits them. Mm -hmm. so if that's what's happening which i do think you're probably right and that's what the show wants to say in theory shouldn't we be seeing different versions of like like i don't mean different versions but different parts of them like if they're split and they're all supposed to be part of a whole that was the original wouldn't that generally mean that like they're different aspects of them yeah I, I mean, guess you don't have to do it that way, but then I don't understand how they can be separated uh, across universes and still like all be part of one whole, right? But existing in these different spots. I think you're partially probably right, mostly because like Sonic doesn't exist in any of the worlds we're going to, which means like mm-hmm. they weren't they weren't necessarily worlds that were there before. You know, we don't we don't really know how that part works, right? And in even in the gem's name, it's called the Paradox Prism, so. Uh, so obviously they it creates time paradoxes it does like all these different things it like you know does some weird time stuff where it's like the world that sonic knows is a completely different world that obviously that nine and from the pirate knuckles knows so maybe 
I mean, maybe it doesn't split their personality. I mean, you could argue that it kind of did because in the jungle world, Tails was essentially re- um, reverted to a more feral state. Yes. See, so like I'd agree with you because of Tails, but what's different about Rouge? Nothing. Between the three worlds, right? You see, this is what I'm saying. Like it's not consistent amongst mm-hmm. the characters that I'm seeing vastly different versions of them. It's like someone gets good focus in each one. Yeah. And that's kind of it. And and that's not entirely working for me uh, mm-hmm. either. If that's yeah. Also, also, if Eggman's part of that too, did all of Eggman's separations just end up in the same place? That's why yeah. we don't see him in any other world. Yeah, because that was one of my all, actually that was one of my bigger problems with this after I was done watching the show was that the only time we get any form of Eggman was from New York City. We don't see him at all in the jungle world. It was Amy who was the antagonist for that one. The um the antagonists in the pirate world were Knuckles' old crew, and I was expecting to see different versions of Eggman, but the only ones we get are in New York. So part so once again, part of me is like I'm kind of upset that we have five different Eggmen in uh, um, in New York City, but then once you go to the other two worlds, he's nowhere to be found. Yeah, uh, you know, whether you call this the first eight episodes and call it a season, I feel like it's a problem that that you don't have answers to how the Paradox Prism is doing this. Like, I, I understand having to leave some surprises and mystery and confusion for Sonic about what's going on, but I'm like, I needed, like, a smart person to have broken this down already of like why things are laying out the way they are, because it's, it's a little, it's a little too, to me, the way it feels is that we have really stellar animation with pretty decent characters, mostly. And then I don't know what the heck is going on. I don't know. Like it, 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 it right now, because I don't have enough information, it feels like just a callous means to do riffs on the characters. And that's kind of it. And I'm like, is there more to this? Is there something else to this? Or is this just, just so we could do fun things with the gang? Cause we didn't know how to make them interesting in their original versions. I mean, I hope there is something more to it, and I hope that the second half or season two, air quotes, does give us that. Um, but I, I do, I do agree. Uh, yeah, because there are there are things problems with the show. Because it's weird. When I was initially watching it, I was having fun. I was like, "Cool, let's watch the next episode." Because they're they're twenty five, thirty minutes. Some episodes, the only the first episode is uh, forty five minutes long. Easy chunks, easy to get through, very quick. Not a bad not a bad use of my time but then the more i thought about it it's like there was there wasn't any other egg man there wasn't any other this it's like what's the paradox prism what's the deal with that how what's shadow doing in like the in between dimensions riff is nine going to be a bad guy eventually i mean yes hopefully hopefully these answers or these questions will be answered in the second half but at the same time it's just like what are they what's the plan with all these different universes are they all going to band together and fight some big bad or is it just sonic going on some wacky crazy adventures yeah i i think for me another part of it is also i like the animation so much that i'm like i kind of wish you were just a normal sonic show yeah um i kind of wish you were just doing like the the original characters in their world fighting eggman and other kind of stuff rather than this we're going to make an excuse to have Knuckles kind of do a terrible French accent and wear a beret. Um, and I'm like, oh, okay, cool, I guess. Which he actually did wear a beret in the original Archie comics when they go into the universe where everyone was evil. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Like, I, they're fun Easter eggs, but like, mm-hmm. I feel like there's a lot of hit and a lot of miss. Uh, yeah. with these these alternate character versions um and yeah. alternate worlds and like there's there's solid solid lands and then big whiffs just big, oh, big yeah. um oh. and i really hope there's i i kind of hope you're right about nine or like something else happens because if the egg council are like our antagonists for the rest of the show i'm bored <laughs> yeah um there none of them are as interesting as eggman is on his own um again like the most the, the the one i like the most is the baby 
And that's purely because, like, I think that they actually thought of clever jokes to use with the baby. Mm -hmm. Um, And I kind of love that Sonic is always sick of having to fight the baby. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But then outside of that, that egg cancel, man, it really sucks a lot of the air out of the room for me. It totally does. Um, Really quickly talking about the voice actors. I love this new voice actor for Sonic. I think he's doing a great job. I Uh, actually, most of the, like, 90% 90% I don't think there's even a voice actor that I'm, I think the one I'm not the biggest fan of is Knuckles but we don't it's see me a too. lot <laughs> it's me too I'm not a big fan like no offense to Adam Narada who plays Knuckles um, but he he's not half the time he's not working for me yeah um, I mean everyone else like I I mean it's different not hearing Colleen O'Shaughnessy or Roger Craig Smith play Tails and Sonic respectively sure. but people they have currently or for the show they nail the characters. I really like Ta- I really like the voice actor for Tails. I love the voice actor for Amy. Um, Rouge for me got a little bit getting used to because I'm so used to hearing the voice actress from Sonic Adventure 2. But once again, that voice actress changed. I want to say into Sonic Heroes and so on and so forth. But I I like I like Rouge a lot. I like that like I'll I'll be honest, like what I like about Rouge's voice acting here is just like compared to a lot of the other uh, uses in Sonic X or um, Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Heroes. It's not just the the sexy voice, I guess I'll say. Right. Like, that's the most reductive way to say it, but like the Jessica Rabbit type voice mm. um, that they gave Rouge. Uh, like, that's not what it's about. Like, which is weird looking back on it, like how they made Rouge kind of like a sex icon inside of the Sonic world. And I'm like, uh, maybe, maybe this was a bad choice, um, but, but they did like, that was a choice. That was a choice on how to handle her voice. And here both in character design and voice, I feel like they've really stepped away from that. And I do yeah. like that a lot. Um, that's um, I'm going to give full credit there. That is uh, Kazumi Evans playing Rouge. And I think she's really good. Um, mm-hmm. I agree I, with you about the voice of Amy, although, to be honest, I don't feel like we've heard a lot of Amy in, outside of the robot Amy, which right. I like. I like her as a character, um, but it's a lot of it's a lot of that, unfortunately, for her. That's a uh, Shannon Chan Kent. Um, yeah. I really like uh, D-Mac Jr., who's playing Sonic. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's an incredible voice for Sonic. Honest to God, oh, yeah. I like I think he's next to the animation i think he's one of the best things about the show is i think he has the voice of the character down oh yeah hand, hand like you just said he is the voice of the character and he is definitely someone who i can see voicing sonic in a long time uh for a long time and i hope that he gets more roles for animated sonic i really yeah. hope i mean not to disparage roger craig smith or um ben schwartz i mean ben schwartz i like him as film sonic he's doing roger, his own thing yeah he's doing his own thing Whereas Roger Craig Smith, I mean, he's been voicing Sonic in in almost all the games since, God, Sonic Heroes, maybe a little bit after that. I yeah. mean, he's been the voice of Sonic for years. Of course, he voiced him in Sonic Boom. Right. Um, but part of me is, is feels like I'd be okay for having Roger Craig Smith be the voice of Sonic in the video games. You have Ben Schwartz be the fi- voice of film Sonic, and then you have this gentleman whose names I completely forgot. d voice Jr. D Mac Jr. Thank you. Be the voice of anime at Sonic because so he, he he nails Sonic's personality to an absolute T for me. Not only that, I feel like he is able. No knocks on Re- Roger Craig Smith. I don't think they've written Sonic for him a lot in the past decade to be like this. But like Sonic's kind of like uh, jokes a minute impetuousness. His his way of just um, making like bad bad jokes. Um, and bad riffs and Sonic being very youthful. Um, mm-hmm. I think D Mac Jr. takes not great dialogue, sometimes bad jokes for Sonic on purpose and sells that Sonic is doing it. And yeah. I, I think that's what's great about it. Yeah, D Mac Jr., it's important to shout out D Mac Jr., first person, first black person to voice Sonic since Jaleel White. Yeah, uh, back been... in the day. Um, yeah, and I think he's doing a great job. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because like you said, because I, I have been recently been playing Sonic Frontiers and Roger Craig Smith's performance in Sonic Frontiers and even the story of the game itself is a bit of a darker tone. It's much more is much more somber Sonic. I mean, yeah, Sonic has a few good, fun little quips here and there, 
but when he's talking to Amy, it's very it's very somber. It's very dark. It's like we I gotta save my friends. She, I have my friend who's a digitized version of herself, and also I'm doing the side quest where it's like these two little um, these rock things, the cuckoos in the game. They find out, oh, we it's like, hey, we're finally together again, and then they instantly die. It's very yeah. early in the game. It's just like that is sad as shit. Oh my god. Yeah, I mean, even going back to Sonic Boom for Smith, like he's while that's a more comedic show, he is often the straight man. Yeah. Um, which is one of the reasons why like Sonic Boom is like fine to me, but not the Sonic show I'm looking for, because they turn Sonic into the straight man. And I'm like, that's okay. I don't mm-hmm. hate that. It works there, but um, it's not Sonic generally. Um uh, this is a good time to also talk about one of my favorite things about Sonic Prime is that everybody kind of is disappointed in Sonic. Yeah. For I, for going in uh, without like thinking. Um, yeah. And I like that. I like that that is there, that it's not just Shadow. It's everyone who's kind of mm. like, ah, Sonic, man, I mean, you're the hero, but you're kind of screwing this up. Um, uh, and I appreciate that that idea is there. Again, wish that we got a little more time with the original so that that idea felt like it was really more present. Yeah. But um, I, I do like the attack that like, we're, we're going at Sonic as like kind of being in the wrong a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah. And he's all like, Oh, but everything worked out. It's fine. And then like, even like when Amy tails, knuckles and Rouge are trying, are fighting a lot of Eggman's robots or even when tails is in the biplane or in the tornado, he's like, this is a trap. And Sonic goes, it, he song essentially just Leroy Jenkins himself into the trap springs it, but he's like, Oh, but everything's okay. I came out fine. Foreshadowing. Um, right. The, the, the whole idea that all this is happening because of Sonic's impulsiveness, I think is really yeah. good. Um, and that, that, yeah. that it's very clear in the show that like, this is a problem. Everybody recognizes about Sonic, not just shadow where it's like, Oh God, Sonic, <laughs> what are you doing? You gotta think, man, you gotta think. But at the same time, I feel that Sonic's personality. He is, I mean, I don't know if that's a trope for characters who have super speed. Um, I mean, the Flash maybe not being the best example because he's the only other one I could think of who does have super speed. But, you know, the Flash is very methodical. He thinks things through. Whereas with Sonic, he is always, I always felt that he was the type of character to just run into a problem head first. And then he's like, run first, ask questions later. And right. even with the video games that's the same thing you run first and then you ask questions later and sometimes yeah. that and sometimes that kind of bites you in the ass because you there might be a bad nick that you don't know is there and you lose all your rings for sure yeah i think they captured that idea really well it's it's something i do like about the show a lot um let's see i'm gonna go to my notes and see what else we haven't touched on yet that's yeah. there um we just went over the attitude sword Sonic's ignorance for listening to other characters. I really like mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I really like shadow trying to rein Sonic in. I do. Yeah. I think that works really well. Shadow, like Sonic is the one who takes it as oh, shadows, like got to stick up his butt <laughs> and, uh, and shadow being like, there's probably a good reason, Sonic, you big dumb idiot. Um, yeah, I, I think it's fair. It's, it's something I actually yeah. really enjoy about the characters dynamic and it also if i made like praise shadow a little bit more um because a lot of times especially in the games and even in the comic books um in the archie books and in some of the idw books now today shadow was i mean he's shadow the hedgehog he's edgelord central i mean if you ever played shadow the hedgehog his ps2 game back in 06 07 edgelord central let's be real but the fact that in this in this show he's i mean he still has that you know his aesthetic just screams like emo edgelord i know i said edgelord a billion and a half times already but the fact that he is more level-headed and he's trying to ring sonic in but sonic's not listening it's their personalities clashing and i think it's done extremely well he's not just constantly brooding it's like i'm the ultimate life form what is my life or this maria instead he's like dude chill think this through and then let's go. If you just keep running into the middle of a of, a, of an attack, you're gonna get screwed. You're, someone's gonna screw up. Yeah, he's really in the Vegeta role at this point. He is. <laughs> <laughs> you are so right. He is Vegeta now. I mean, that comp has always been there, but now like the character personality is far more in line with what that role means. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually really good. I like that analogy. Um. 
I really, uh, we've talked about the animation being really good, but it's, it's something that I've seen people notice on Twitter, maybe you did too. Um, the animation on Sonic's ears. Uh, Sonic's ears will look at a sound before he will. Oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah, if you, I'm sure you could find it, but like people have pointed out that his ears turn in the direction of like a sound before he does. Not oh. not like, you know, like when it's a big moment when something like is happening that's, uh, you know, like alerting Sonic to something, his ears will turn and notice the sound first. Oh, huh, that's neat. I didn't think of that. I didn't notice that before. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the first show to ever think of, you know, Sonic's got those ears right there. They yeah. should probably do what ears do. <laughs> um should. Specifically animal ears, because like human ears yeah. don't do that, but like no. ears that stick up like that, they they do react. So uh they they did that, and I think that's really good. Yeah. Um, um I mean we talk about how there are some video game Easter eggs in the in the show. I mean, my personal favorite is when Sonic is going at super speed, he's doing the the figure eight where his his legs essentially disappear and he's doing the super eight peel out. Yeah. Um that was something from my favorite video game of all time, Sonic C D. And that's been implemented in some of the books here and there. But the fact that they use that in the animation a lot, and actually they recently put it in Sonic Mania, or not recently, it was part of Sonic Mania the whole time where he's going really fast. And I just love that the animators put that in there because I feel that Sonic going super fast in this, and his legs are essentially turning into a figure eight. Um, that's a classic Sonic the Hedgehog trope. That's a classic look. And the fact they use it a lot in the animation, I really appreciate that. Yeah, I do too. Um, that's a good, that's a good point, Ben. Cause I, I agree. Um, I agree wholeheartedly about that. I will say that I do wish we kept more iconic home environments than just green hill zone. I'm, yeah. I'm personally a comic fan who's like, do we always have to go back to just green hill zone? I um, want to, I, I want to say New York city has some nods to chemical plant. Sure. Or it but does. I'm not a hundred percent sure. But more of more than that, like something I don't like about the setup of the show, and again, it's not spending enough time with our original characters. But I don't like that the implication is that they all just live in Green Hill Zone. And I'm like, no, I kind of like when Knuckles lives in his own place, and Rouge yeah. likes the city and comes, you know, like I like that there are different places in the world of sonic the hedgehog that are outside of Green Hill Zone, yeah. and like it feels counterintuitive to the character to imply that sonic likes to only stay in one spot at green hill zone yeah i mean i get it green hill zone is it's the first level of the first game the music's iconic the stage is iconic the loop-de-loop's iconic it's in every game it. it's in every effing game yeah in some way in some way i won't yeah. say like you know one for one because obviously like the adventures don't have it one for one yeah but yeah and also you it's got, still like, kind of there <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Sonic 2 has Emerald Hill and then uh, Angel Island Zone for Sonic 3, uh, mm -hmm. Palm Tree Panic for... I mean, there's always some tropical island thing as the first level. It's like... Right. It, you have, like, that classic feel with a big loop-to-loop. -loop. That's the thing. But I also agree. Maybe let's go to South Island where Sonic 2 is... Like, let's go to Chemical Plant Zone. Let's go to Emerald Hill. It's like, hey, this is the spot where Tails and I first met. Or even do let's go to um, Angel Island or some other zone or classic zone that fans of the series would know. But I do agree constantly being in Green, green Hills is a little it's like we get it. You like Green Hill. Well, on well, on top of that, it's just like every time we go to another world, it's like, yeah, and this used to be Green Hill Zone. And I'm <sighs> like, oh, Jesus Christ. OK, I guess. Do you feel like, yeah, you know what? This used to be Emerald Hill. Oh, something different. <laughs> Right. Or just like, 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 what if where the pillar of, of the prism that we were going towards because it was such a knuckles focused area anyway for the pirate world? What if that was Angel Island? Like, why did it have to be this used to be Green Hill Zone also? I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, Knuckles' whole thing in the games and the comic books, he's the guardian of Angel Island. He doesn't leave Angel Island unless asked to. He doesn't um, leave Angel Island except every time a story happens because then he asks. Yes. Angel. Exactly. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Freaking Angel Island. Every game, like it's on the board, it's on the like setup sheet of every game. Like, yeah. all right, how do we get Knuckles off the island this time? It's like, yeah, how do we get him off Angel Island? Oh my god! Freaking Knuckles. Um. Or even you know what? Station Square. 
Yeah, because yeah. because like you were saying, Rouge likes the city. That she's a thief and she's also a government agent. Let's go to Station Square. Let's see what Station Square is like. Right. Um, or even the Mystic Ruins. That would be cool. Yeah, there's there's options. The thing is, there's yeah. options, and I hope to see more dynamic locations because I was just like. It was one thing when it was like we started at Green Hill Zone and kind of implied that that's like Sonic's like place where he stays and he doesn't really travel a lot. And I'm like, OK, and then and then you get to uh, going to the alternate worlds and all the time they're having to be like, but remember, once this was Green Hill Zone. And I'm like, I mean, like, I get it, like remind him of what he lost, I guess. But mm-hmm. we could go other places, guys. I mean, look, I get it. Green Hill Zone is like the most iconic is one of the most iconic areas in all of Sonic the Hedgehog video games and media. But you got other places. You got a, you know what? I would kill. Okay, not kill, but I would love to see Pumpkin Hill from Sonic Adventure 2. Oh god, like they'll never. <laughs> they won't. They won't, but ser- hey, that is the one level when I was playing cuz I did not like Knuckles's levels or Rouge's levels in Sonic Adventure 2 when I was playing that game, but Pumpkin sure. Hill Pumpkin Hill was great. I Pumpkin love Hill Pumpkin awesome. Hill. Yeah, I love Pumpkin Hill. Uh, I, Pumpkin Hill is I think I can still hear the music in my head. Um, I probably got had the song on Spotify after we're done. Uh, yeah. Okay. So um, I I want to highlight again. Like I really like Nine. It's not just character. I like his design. I like, I like the setup yeah. of Nine and everything. I think it works really well in the context of the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say. I mean, I do like Rusty Rose. Because once again, a, a little, because you have a, a character who's not supposed to be roboticized. I mean, Ice interpreted it as a little bit of a nod to the robotization, robotization process from Sonic's at AM and the Archie comics, but they probably sure. just said, "Hey, let's just turn it into a robot for a hot second. Yeah, um, it's but not a I hot do, second; it's the whole show. Well, yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, let's just turn her into robot because you know she's Sonic's friend slash maybe love interest. I don't know. That's all up in the air. Sega keeps flip flopping back and forth. Not they don't keep flip flopping, but they, yeah. Um, but I do like her design a whole lot, and I love. But once again, the, I want to say my favorite redesign is Tails, aka Nine, because yeah. the way that he climbs up with his spider with his like robot tails is just like so. Ugh. Mm-hmm. It's so creepy, but also just his entire personality just screams and his story and his character arc throughout the this part of the show just screams that he is gonna eventually have ulterior motives he is eventually going to be like no i want to be in control of everything and he becomes the the main villain i really hope that that happens because i think that would be really good character development for sonic realizing that his full heartedness turned his best friend against him well, and like it's really cool because you're seeing it as you think about this, you're seeing it as um Tails, who's usually so much the the best friend and the trustworthy character, and they really flip that on their ear without it feeling forced. And mm-hmm. I think that worked. Um yeah. in a way where like I won't say that I'm convinced Tails will be a bad guy, but like it's definitely up in the air, and that's pretty impressive to pull off with the character at this point in time part of me hopes i have a feeling okay if i were to like think of this logically it's like if what my head what my head's telling me what my heart's telling me my head's telling me that nine is not going to be a bad guy he's gonna come he's like songs gonna convince him with words and be like okay yeah let's do it but what my heart wants is that tails becomes the main the, the big bad at the end of the show right that's we'll what see. i want that's what i we'll hope see. that's what because i think that would be... you you brought that up so what i what i want to ask is do you see Sonic Prime being a show that doesn't like can still follow the you know this Sonic and his original gang without the Paradox Prism? Do you think that Ooh. like the Paradox Prism arc can be resolved and then we can do more Sonic stories just in the Sonic world? I hope so. I like the You actors. don't really believe it, do you? Uh I I I want I want to say yeah. I want to say I believe it can cuz I love the, the way these characters are. I love these voice actors, but part of me is, I mean, the, with Netflix's um, track record, when it comes to animation and when it comes to things like this, once Sonic Prime's done, they're not going to touch Sonic again. Well, I'm not saying like when Sonic Prime's done, I'm saying like, can Sonic Prime be a show that takes place past this, this arc? 
can more of the show go on without it being about this as the focal point? And I want to say uh, the answer is yes, obviously it could. I'm saying, mm-hmm. will it? Probably not. It probably ends when the paradox prism stuff is done. And I think that's kind of lame because yeah. in the way that things are going, that means like at the end, then Sonic gets back with his original friends and we'll be like, and he's back together and yay, the end. And it's like, hey, Sonic cool. learned a lesson and all of his friends don't remember anything, but he's going to appreciate them now. And he's not going to, it's like, and that's the end of Sonic Prime. And I'm just going to, and I'll be like, but you can do so much more. That's the thing is like you're sitting right here and you're like, you got this great animation, like you got so much you can do. I feel like we're doing some pretty reserved stuff. Yeah. Uh, that's that's held back a bit. Um, again, like what irks me about this whole plot, this multiverse plot, is that it takes too gosh dang long for Sonic to get what's going on. Mm-hmm. Like it gets it once he once he's in the jungle world and he's still like, whoa, you're still not you, Sonic. Come on, man. It's like <laughs> get bro. get what's going on. <laughs> it's like like when he was talking to, to Tails, he's like, Tails, what's wrong, buddy? It's like, bruh. Co- <laughs> yeah. Seriously, you literally just jumped through a portal and you saw 20 other different dimensions as you were flying through it and you landed in this one. You gotta know by this point that you 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 done effed up right um i think that i hope if we see more worlds they put as much thought into them as they clearly put into new york city Mm -hmm. like they care more about it i do like that when sonic goes back time has passed so that he's not just traveling through space he's traveling through space and time so like he was gone for a while and it's had enough time for like their whole revolutionary army to build up. I do like that as an aspect of like the jumping back and forth, how that can be affected. Yeah. Um, so we'll see how that is going forward. Yeah. Uh, I, I do. I was again, like really surprised with the pirate episode. Um, and I didn't expect rusty Rose to show up in it as the bad guy. Um, I liked her inclusion there. I like her seeing Amy, her and Amy seeing each other and being thrown. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought that was really good. Um, I'm sure that's going to build into something in some way. It's going to change Rusty Rose in some way. Possibly. Uh, do you think we're going to we're going to see the other characters from, say, the Jungle episode pop up eventually? Because I have a feeling uh, we might. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I I just I like that. That was the that that was the point where I was like, I'm not going to tell Brandon and Ryan to watch this show because yeah. I was like, this is, this is just like there's eight episodes and two of them kind of feel like a waste of my time. Yeah. Yeah. Once For I got the to the I, once we got to New York City stuff, I'm like, you know what? Maybe. And then we got to the jungle. I'm like, nope. that was my I think you were texting me when I was in the middle of the second jungle episode. and You asked me. Or you, te- or you message me, he's like, hey, do should we show this to Brandon and Ryan? And I said... Because I was at the same point. It's because I was at the same point, and I'm like, I was hoping you were further so you could tell me, <laughs> tell me if it was worth it. Because I was like, man, this is a rough point. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, even when I was watching, I was like, can, you know what, can we go back to New York City? I think I would agree. New York City is my favorite bit because I felt like the characters were more fleshed out. You had, you had stakes, you know, Robotnik 1 again. I just, I apparently... It just might be because of my love of the comics and Sa- Sonic Sad AM that I love it when we have a group of freedom fighters, Robotnik already won, and they're trying to take back their home. Sure. Um, and then I will also say the pirate one did surprise me as well because at, thir- at first I thought I was going to hate the pirate one. I thought I was me just going to be like when they first the started talking. We saw, the moment we saw pi- pirates in the trailer, I was like, this isn't what I wanted. <laughs> yeah and i like the fact that everyone started talking and knuckles was like let's party i'm like oh my god stop why what did you do to him and then thankfully the episode continues like oh he's just running away because he effed up and now he's going back to his his uh crazed maniacal give me my treasure bit yeah um speaking of the pirate stuff i really like uh the bit where sonic is pulling the ship and knuckles slams the back so that it shoots over the i thought that was really good yeah um also i do like how they constantly or they don't constantly but they also keep talking about how sonic can't swim and he's afraid of water i do like how they keep mentioning that um am i imagining it or did they put in the the drowning music in one of the episodes i I honestly don't know i feel like i'm imagining it yeah 
because when he in the pirate episode he has the hovercraft shoes so he doesn't sink right yeah i'm probably i'm probably i'm probably just forcing a memory onto it i will tell you um i don't know if you saw but they released uh an image from the next batch of episodes and it's oh. shadow it's shadow having sonic pinned underwater while holding up an emerald oh um, yeah i did see that yeah so i'm like all right so we're getting some we're getting some some stuff yeah I'm, man i I'm just that. i feel like i would probably have a more positive uh spin on the show overall if the rest of the episodes were there because again to me this does not feel like a season one we have to talk about it now because i don't know when we're getting those those next episodes um but it's it just feels like it's an incomplete story and i'm judging it midway through and i'm like there's a lot of things that maybe when the answers to these questions come i would be more like yeah okay a lot of good stuff here two jungle episodes i didn't like but like overall pretty good um and i can't be there because like the egg council shit doesn't work for me and doesn't make total sense and and they i don't feel like we've come full circle on whatever the heck's going on there um shadow the shadow stuff i really like but i don't know where it's going yeah Yeah, it's I mean, it's weird because I I did enjoy Song of Prime. I did enjoy most of this of the show and I had fun watching it, but I do agree there are some glaring issues, there are some glaring problems. Um, but thankfully it's mostly in the story department. It's not in, it's obviously not in the animation. We've been we you and I have been talking constantly about how much we love the animation. We love the little touches and the care that they put into this animation and how the voice actors deliver their lines and how they get the they like nailed the characters down almost per, practically perfectly. Um, it's just the story is just really really lacking, and yeah. I really hope things get better in the second half or in season two. Um, and honestly, I would like the show to continue. I was actually going to ask you like if they like say Netflix does continue with Sonic Prime and there's like a season three or whatever. Do you think that maybe with in further episodes they can actually it, they use the paradox prism again, but instead of going to like completely different dimensions, they go into the dimensions of the games, possibly. I mean, this no. is this, this is me completely just being a spec, just being speculative. No, I know. I just I don't I don't believe it, um, yeah. especially because like, so some amount of the games are clearly canon. We just don't know which. I mean, Sega did have a job opening for Sonic Lore to try and connect the entire thing, and your boy applied to that, didn't get it. Um, yeah, because I I feel like Sega, right now, Sega especially, they're trying to essentially come up with a Hyrule Historia version of Sonic the Hedgehog. Sure. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that if, if there was more Paradox Prism stuff past, you know, what they're handling right now, I don't think, like, I think you'd be closer with saying, like, we go to alternate shows than um the worlds of the games because i think the majority of the games are supposed to be uh in green hill are supposed to be the history of the characters right it would be interesting i think the sad am slash archie kind of stuff would be really interesting too because you could do all of these other characters that but they've kind of moved away from them at this point so it'd be oh. kind of surprising if they said, "Yeah, go ahead, bring those characters in." Well, after the after the many lawsuits with um, Ken Penders and Archie, Sega was, is done. Yeah, I mean they haven't brought any of the Archie characters back over into the current IDW books. Essentially, that universe is dead. Well, that's what um, I'm saying. Is like I just you know like you've got all these like you could really see something fresh there, right? We're we're talking hypothetical where like yeah. Sonic goes just so what you would do what you would do is take Sonic and the, the original gang, like actually let them be their original characters again. And they're now going with Sonic to these other worlds. And they end up in a place where you have those freedom fighters. So you have Sally, you have the walrus, you have all these other characters that they don't know. Uh, and how Sonic is received there. Like, like again, kind of talking about Sonic being a little bit of a bullheaded screw up in our Sonic prime world. And then talking about like, you could have like this way more heroic version of Sonic that he's kind of thrown by. Um, you could do that. They won't do that, but you could. No, well, although part of me now really wants to see Sonic Prime and the gang go into the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog world and deal with Scratch, Cracker, and Coconuts. God. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> That would be just uh, as bad as the jungle episodes. Yeah, that that would. Oh, God, I cannot believe I adored that show so much as a kid. Looking back on it now, that show hurts. It well, was, it's, it's, you know, it's made for children, but like, yeah, it's, it's yeah, a far I, away from the stuff that's good about Sonic. Yeah, um, and I was, I was a target demographic. That show had me hook, line, and sinker. Dude, what I watched I, it too. Like, we were both, we were both there. We get it. Yeah. Um, I, oh, man. You want to do some Sonic Underground in this? Yeah, okay. That, okay. Know. Yes. Give me that. Give me that. They won't. Okay. There's no they way. Won't. Nope. But I would be. I would be super into bringing the Underground characters in. Uh, um, I don't know. I. I feel like. I feel like. I feel like the show's team, or maybe like the people who are licensing it to them, don't want to be as ambitious as we're talking. Right. Um, and I feel like that's kind of present in the show and it's part of what I'm rubbing up against is that I'm like, there's a lot of potential here and I feel like we're only kind of scratching the surface of these ideas rather than like digging into what the potential is here. Um, and whether that's like kind of shallow characters, like for me, ultimately, like where I'm at with Sonic Prime, I enjoy it. A lot of that enjoyment comes from the appearance of it. A lot of that enjoyment comes from like, this is the best animation for Sonic that we've ever seen. Um, and it looks really good. It looks really, really good. Like I, I like watching the show because visually it's really incredible. Um, and I, it's just, it ends up being a lot of looks with a lack of a lot of depth for for the animation i would say this is absolutely the best 3d sonic animation i or for a television show i've ever seen um i i would put this on par with the animation that we would see in sonic mania the opening sequence for sonic mania or even the in the animation shorts in between games for sonic origins because those are beautifully animated they are they're Um, going for something else but yeah i get you yeah but once again this is sonic like sonic like the sonic origins and sonic mania shorts they're all silent. They're all silent. They're essentially voiceless cartoons. Amazing voiceless cartoons, but they're voiceless. Whereas when you have Sonic speaking, you go to the 3D stuff. But I would still say those Sonic Mania shorts and this, the animation is very close. I mean, personally, I give the edge to the 2D because once again, I'm biased. But this 3D animation, if we get more stuff like this, you have me. I'm like, yeah, I'll watch it. Let's go. I am ready for this. I think I just want a slightly more adult Sonic show. And I don't mean like heavy duty mature. I just mean one that feels a little less like it's talking down to the audience. Yeah. Like, cause half the time that's where this is. It feels like, you know, a lot of the Sonic shows are geared for children and I get it. Mm-hmm. But like, I, like we've talked about before, like you can have animated things that are geared for children to be able to watch that are also like engaging for adults. And I feel like half the time this is missing that bar. Put set. I am back on Netflix. Damn it. Yeah. Um, Set AM is a good example. Um, you know, we've talked about other shows that are currently running, like, you know, you got your Steven Universe, your Gravity Falls, Owl House, all that stuff kids can watch, but also, like, there's a lot for adults to get into there. And I wish that Sonic Boom, sorry, Sonic Prime was on that level. Um, Me too. Where I feel like there's a lot to, like, get out of it, regardless of your age. And I feel like it's still, there is sometimes, but, like, it's mostly still kind of going for that youthful kid audience and i yeah. feel like that's a little bit of a mistake after how well the the movies did i think they mm-hmm. prove that there's enough of an audience out there that's more than just children for sonic oh yeah definitely definitely and i and i still think like this was supposed to be an opportunity to try and grab that audience into a sonic cartoon and i think they might have missed the bar on that one a bit yeah j- just because a again bit. because again unless the next episodes to come out change my mind this is not one i would recommend to like our co-host Brandon and Ryan, because yeah, I want them to still be mildly interested in checking out Sonic material in the future. And I'm not sure this is going to do it. Nope. <laughs> I mean, I'm still waiting for the day where I could sit down and watch Brandon play Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2. See, I think, I think he'll like that, but we have to like, be careful about what other Sonic stuff gets to him before then. Yeah. Cause I throw some Sonic stuff his way and they did not like it. <laughs> well, <laughs> You, you whiffed a little bit on the comic one there. My I friend. did. I did. I do. I whiffed much, a lot of much those. like for those who aren't familiar, like recent, not too long ago at the end of last year, Ben, Ben brought up another one of the current IDW Sonic books uh, and, and Brandon and uh, Ryan, our co-host both bounced off it. But again, like as, as I said there, part of the problem is like, cause Ryan brought it up. He's like, shouldn't we have read like volume one before this? And I'm like, it wouldn't have helped you. And it's part of the problem with this show too. It wouldn't have helped you. 
because you're not familiar with the characters already. It doesn't right. ease you in, and neither does this show. Yeah, and I'm even I'm pretty far behind on the book on the current Song of the Hedgehog comics because I've been buying those books since the, the IDW line since they came out, and they keep mentioning a war. They kept mentioning it's like yeah, the war is over, yada yada. I was like, what war? Is it the war from Sonic Forces? Is it the is it is does this game does this book take place after the events of that game? What happened? Obviously, you're not mentioning any of the Archie stuff before, but what happened? And as far as I know, they still haven't exactly explained what happened, and it's yeah. 50 plus issues in right yeah um and i think that's that's they have the similar like barometer of like you've got to be a certain amount of sonic literate before you can engage with this material which isn't the best way to bring fans into a franchise not I mean, right now not with sonic's popularity hitting no. from the movies like uh it, it, it's unfortunate because i think sonic prime looks so good and like they were both interested in it and i think a lot of people were and it's poised in the perfect position to like grab those movie fans Mm-hmm. I don't know that it's going to do it. I think it'll it'll work for some and not work for a lot of others. Yeah, I mean, it sucks because I don't want to feel like a gatekeeper if someone were to come up to me and like, hey, I want to get into Sonic. Should I watch Sonic Prime? I mean, I don't feel like this is me being a gatekeeper, but I'm going to tell them it's like, you're, there's going to be some stuff in there. You're not going to, it's not going to, it's not the best. You're going to probably not, watch. It's, it's not gatekeeping because you're not trying to keep them away from the property. You're just giving them the heads up of like, you know, this is not the best that Sonic has to offer in a narrative sense. Yeah um yeah maybe okay. gatekeeping, gatekeeping was the wrong word uh i get what you mean though yeah uh okay i think that'll do it do you have any final thoughts you want to say about these first eight episodes of sonic prime um well like we said earlier a lot of with a lot of hits um the biggest props to the animators the voice actors amazing job i really hope netflix continues i mean once again we're waiting for the second half of season one slash season two whatever you want to call it I really hope it does the story department kind of, you know, builds up and it's like, okay, cool. We have answers. We have, we have quite qu- answers to our questions and it turns out to be a very solid Sonic show. And what I really do hope after that is we get more. I really want more. I I'm always down for more Sonic. I'm always ready for more Sonic um, media. And we haven't had a really good Sonic television show in a very long time. So I'm hoping the end of the of the, the season hits the mark, but I'm also hoping it does well enough that Netflix says, yes, let's do more. Who knows? Maybe we just need to, we need Sega to throw more money at them and be like, yes, we give people like this, give us more, but who knows? Yeah. Uh, I think you summed it up pretty well. I, I would agree with everything there. Um, uh, the, the voice acting overall is pretty good. I, the only person who most of the time doesn't work for me is knuckles. Um, just some weird stuff going on there with some of those choices. Sorry, uh, Nux. <laughs> we love you, Nux, but I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, but overall, uh, yeah, we're in the same place, you know, like come for the animation, stay for the animation. And that's probably <laughs> where it's probably at. it uh, for now. Okay. Um, maybe we'll do a check in again after the next batch comes out. We'll see. Probably oh, quick question before we, before you head out, is there one character or villain you're hoping to see in the next batch of episodes? That's a good question. Um, no, I'll say there isn't one because I don't have any faith they're going to bring anybody else in. Yeah, they're probably not. Um, th- again, like I feel like their their vision for this show is more limited than the potential that exists. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, I think you probably would be in the same place. Like, I think Metal Sonic would be cool to see in some capacity in this show. I don't mm-hmm. have a lot of faith that'll happen. Um, I I think there's a lot of fun things they could do, and I don't think any of them are going to happen in this this show. I mean, if I had to guess, I would say Metal would probably be the easiest to bring in, but they're probably not going to do it. He's prob- Metal's probably going to be for maybe a season down the line or something. Who knows what they're going to do after the season's over? Yeah, I don't I don't have a lot of faith that we're not going to just see alternate versions of all the characters we've already seen. Like your, your cast is essentially these five and Mm -hmm. uh, that are behind me and shadow and Eggman, Mm -hmm. And then that's, that's the show. That's the show. Oh, and big. Oh, I'm sorry. And big, the cat, you know, who is there. Yeah. Who was fishing out of a dumpster. And I laughed. I thought that was funny. Cause he's still, I'm sorry sorry about the, the barking dog. all All right. It's okay. Uh, we will wrap up there. So this has been 
an animation station uh where is one of the fake nerd network shows there's a lot of them there's all kinds of stuff going on um when this comes out i don't even know there's all kinds of things there's there's cinephiles there's picard uh on fake nerds watch there's last of us on fake nerds watch there's a pause menu about painting video games um there yeah. which has ben on it because ben is the host of that show um there's uh more and more there's the classic Fickner podcast there's all kinds of stuff happening there's too much i can't keep track there's too much it's too much um, we're busy boys yeah go check out any of those things uh there's all kinds of stuff here on the channel for you to look at okay uh that will do it ben where can they find you you could find me on the internet at ben magnet 27 instagram twitter and tiktok you could also find me of course hosting base arcade pause menu and being one of the regular fake nerds on the fake nerd podcast is you'll also find me writing for old school gamer magazine fusion gaming magazine go nintendo.com and playing mary frankenstein on dn dark which is a dungeons and dragons real play podcast uh and you can find me um only on things on the fake nerd network i don't show up anywhere else uh <laughs> You can follow me at Sparks Witty on Instagram and Twitter, S-P-A-R-K-Z Witty. So until next time, we are now departing.